Hello, good evening, welcome everyone. So come on people, let's talk about fatty liver. Many people don't know what steatosis or fatty liver is. Do you know what happens? People have no symptoms, no symptoms at all. What happens? You don't feel anything. By the time you start to have any symptoms of hepatic steatosis, it's sometimes already advanced. So how does it usually happen? It usually happens that you go to a doctor and he asks for routine tests, asks for an abdominal ultrasound, and the abdominal ultrasound says that there's fat in the liver. And do you know what happens? There's usually no symptom. So I'll tell you one of my statistics. So my patients that I take, let's say I take 10 patients, 10 patients I ask for an ultrasound, at least four usually have some degree of hepatic steatosis, at least four have some degree of hepatic steatosis. The big problem with hepatic steatosis or fat in the liver is when you have this fat for a long time. Then you start to get sick, you start to have problems and illnesses. So why is it so important to take care of liver steatosis? My friends, pay attention. The liver is our organ, which is like a cauldron that takes care of all the processes. It's like our body's filter. Of course, the kidneys are the filter. All medication, all food, everything that passes through your body, contraceptives, antibiotics, everything goes through the liver. Everything passes through the liver. So if your liver is bad, everything will be complicated. Then you start getting migraines and you don't know where they come from. Then you hang over when you drink beer or wine. It gets worse, you don't know where it comes from. Then you start to feel fatigued and you don't know where it comes from. It all comes from hepatic steatosis, which is complicating the liver. Then your triglyceride levels are rising. You don't know where it's coming from. Then you start to get inflamed. Then your wounds don't heal anymore. Then you have bad breath. In other words, everything that happens in your body has to do with the liver. Everything has to do with the liver. And look, what's most interesting is that many people don't know that untreated hepatic steatosis, a fatty liver, fatty for a long time, leads to something that nobody talks about. But it's fatty hepatitis. In other words, you can have inflammation in the liver with changes in liver enzymes, right? TGO, TGP, gamma GT. It can even reach a degree of liver failure due to fat in the liver. So we need to understand that this is serious. It's very serious. I'm going to tell you the best treatment for fatty liver. You'll leave here knowing what my best treatment for fatty liver is. The good news is that this fat in the liver is reversible. So if you've had an ultrasound and it shows grade one or grade two steatosis, it doesn't matter. What matters is that you have to treat it, right? What matters is that you have to treat it. What are the most common causes of hepatic steatosis? First of all, it's the brick stomach. If you're fat, if your belly is big, there's a good chance you have fat in your liver. So look at your belly now. Look at it now and see. If your belly is big, if your belly is big, you could have fat in your liver. So what's big? Get a tape measure. Let's be nice. Take a tape measure. You're a man. Look, if your belly is getting bigger, I'm being very nice. I'm using the criteria. If your belly is over 90 centimeters, you could have hepatic steatosis. You don't even need that many tests. If you're a woman, if you're over 80, if you're over 80, 85, you have abdominal fat. So a lot of women get lipo and think it'll sort them out, but it won't. So you have to be careful with that. Abdominal fat is one of the biggest causes of hepatic steatosis. If you have a brick belly, a watermelon belly, a beer belly, a bicycle belly, if you have a big belly, not only do you look uglier, ah, Diane is bullying. No, I don't want to. I don't want to bully you. I want you to be healthy. I want to bother you so that you get better, don't I? I want you to get better. Is that right? So abdominal fat is one of the biggest causes. Look, it's important. Diane, how do I detect that I have steatosis? One of the things is to start measuring your belly. If your boost is big, like most people here, if your boost is big, I don't know, you have to book an ultrasound, you have to book the ultrasound, then in the ultrasound, the abdominal ultrasound is the one that gives the diagnosis. It's simple, there's no radiation, etc. Diane, how often? Once a year. You have an abdominal ultrasound once a year. Water with lemon people, yes or no? So, 
Don't wait for your liver to show symptoms. Oh, because I'm burping. Don't expect that. It doesn't show symptoms. When it does, sometimes it's too late. It's too late. There are people who have hepatic steatosis and the first symptom is a coagulation disorder, bleeding. Bleeding, right? So don't expect that. What causes hepatic steatosis in food? Write it down. Everything you like sometimes. You don't know that here on our channel, people aren't like that anymore. But look. Sweet, salty. Sugars, pasta. Pizza. These are the big villains, especially carbohydrates. Frying with cooking oils, soybean oil, sunflower oil. Okay? If you're new to the channel, you might not know about these things. But look. I'm going to take my glasses off to tell you. A lot of people already know. I take my glasses off so that I can have a greater connection with you and you can see my green eyes. Guys, fruit juice is one of the biggest causes of fatty liver. Fruit juice is worse than alcohol. You'll drink beer, cachaca. That's better than fruit juice. Pay attention. Fruit juice does the same thing that beer does to the liver, that alcohol does to the liver. The metabolism is similar. It's the same thing. The fructose in fruit juice, juice is juice. The fructose in fruit juice is so harmful to our bodies. It's so poisonous, as Jane is saying, it's so poisonous that our brains don't accept fructose. And fructose doesn't go up to the brain, it doesn't pass through the blood-brain barrier. So what happens when you drink fruit juice, that fruit juice goes completely to the liver, totally. And there it becomes triglyceride. Triglyceride. Triglyceride is bad fat. Let's exercise. Start exercising that way by eating less sugar, eating less pizza, eating less bread, eating less cake, less snacks, fried food and exercising. You'll improve. So when you eat a lot of carbohydrates, the liver takes the glucose and fructose and turns it into triglycerides. You know what I find interesting? I take my glasses off to impress myself. When I get indignant, I do it like this. Now I'm going to do it like this. Eta, when you get to... Doctor there, you look, your triglycerides are high. What happens? You leave the office with simvastatin. And told, don't eat fat. That's it. So that's not what works. So if you have high triglycerides, you have to do the following. It has nothing to do with you eating fat. You can eat fat. The problem is that you have to go out like this. Don't eat sugar, don't drink juice, and go and exercise. Shame on you. Start your life, cut out rice, cut out bread, cut out carbohydrates. There's another sowl next door. Cut out carbohydrates. Why does the liver have fat? The liver needs fat. If you go 12 hours without eating, the source of fat, the liver, is there. It's important that your body looks for fat in the liver. You need energy. It's important to have a certain amount of fat, but the problem is exaggeration, excess. So when you start accumulating fat in the liver, the liver can't cope. So you start to increase your belly, you increase your abdominal fat, and the problems start to happen, and everything becomes inflamed, and you don't know why. So you need to exercise and improve your diet. If you already have fat in your liver, you need to look. If you, I know there are some people here who already have fatty liver. If you already have it, you need to cut out alcohol 100% at this point. Zero. Zero beer, zero, not even wine. Remember, forget fruit juice. So fructose, as we've already said, has the same metabolism as alcohol. So. Alcohol is so much better than, fructose is so much worse than alcohol. That when you drink alcohol, it goes to the brain. You even get drunk. But when you drink fruit juice, you don't get drunk. It doesn't even go to the brain. The brain doesn't accept it. So the genetic issue, there's also a bit of the genetic issue, but the genetic issue is 10%. Now I'm going to tell you the main food, the main food for hepatic steatosis. It's called... artichoke. What is the supplement for hepatic steatosis? Silymarin. Write that name down. Silymarin. Diane. What's the dose? I shouldn't talk about the dose here, 
but a person with fatty liver needs silymarin, 200 milligrams every eight hours, right? Every eight hours. So for how long? For four months. Then you do another ultrasound, you do another ultrasound, so that's important. Make detox juice. We have several videos on this. Silymarin, exactly. Silymarin. Can you use lemon? Lemon can, yes. So look, people. I want to leave you with this content on hepatic steatosis. Share it with everyone you know. Share it with people. Silymarin is a substance that, for example, exists in artichokes, right? Give you all a big hug. The video is going to be better because it's going to be posted and it's going to be better. Okay? Big kiss on the heart. Bye, guys.